right, we're glad to have you back. The battle for the third most important political office in Nigeria keeps getting fiercer mm. since Senate President Bukola Saraki decamped from the ruling All Progressives Congress to the People's Democratic Party. Threats of his impeachment have been making the round. Yeah, Saraki's defection from the APC, who still stands the majority in the Red Chamber, has become the source of political debate as the PDP, though the minority now controls the legislative arm of a government but uh, Saraki says he is not losing sleep over plots by the APC to impeach him as he believes democracy will go the way of the rule of law. Well in a swift reaction to Saraki's statement the APC has dared the Senate president to reconvene the Red Chamber if indeed he's not disturbed. The acting national publicity secretary of the APC says Saraki will be democratically removed whenever the Senate is reconvened. Yeah, the Senate had on July the 24th adjourned the plenary until September the 25th due to what it termed attacks on the leadership of the National Assembly. But will the Senate succumb to pressure of reconvening before uh, it, it, its fixed date? And will the APC be able to achieve the two-thirds majority of the Senate when it reconvenes? These are some of the issues we'll be looking at, mm -hmm. uh, as well as other implications for democracy in Nigeria. We have joining us from Port Harcourt now, a member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Chidi Wihelka. He represents Ikwere Emohua Federal Constituency. Honorable uh, uh, Chidi, good morning. Nice to have you join us right now. Thank you, Mike. How are you? We are fine here, and we hope that uh, Port Harcourt is fine too. Now, let's get into this issue proper. Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians are saying that hmm. the way we hear of this impeachment moves and issues from the National Assembly, it, it seems to be heating the polity unnecessarily. What do you make of this? You see, Mike, uh, one thing you must understand in the issue of National Assembly is that as a leader of National Assembly, you must be ready to take responsibility for your actions and inactions. If you want to take any action, you should be ready to weigh the left and the right and know which way it will go. If it favors you, you take the praises. And if it does not favor you, then you take the blame. If you have crossed over from APC to PDP, and then you now find out that you are majority, the, the, it is a call of honor, because the House, uh, the National Assembly is called National Assembly, it's assembly for the nation, for the progress of the nation, for the development of the nation. So if you have taken the whole sort of decision and you find yourself in the minority, the only way out not to do uh, not to put any uh, uh, the country in the situation we are is for just honorable to resign at the senate president and then give way to the majority in the house to continue because we have not seen where minority will be leading majority it has not been done it's not done anywhere minority cannot lead majority all this argument it's just argument because we are not yet looking at men of honor. In this country, what we are saying now that we need men of honor mm. who, if you cross over from part A to part B, mm. from APC to PDP, you now find out that you are now a minority in the House. You honorably resign and okay. give and become just a member of the Senate. Yeah, but, but honorable, the, the constitution of the standing rules, it. honorable, sorry, sorry, let, let, me, let me just chip this in. The constitution or the standing rules of the National Assembly has not specified that a minority party mm -hmm. cannot be the leader of the House. So, so, so where does that issue of uh, you should resign come from? The issue is simple. Since the... Mike... Mm. Go ahead. Mike, see, in, in this country, since 1990, even 1979, when we started practicing democracy, minority had not led majority in the Senate. And if that be the case, what it means is that you must be a man of honor. We are talking about integrity here. We are okay, not talking well, about just rules. Honorable Chidi, uh, we hear you. You have made that point. Let me put this in. You have made that point very clearly. 
as to the issue of honor that uh -huh. it is the you know the the honorable thing to do for mm. the senate president to step down but are you saying that because it has not happened before in nigeria or elsewhere for that matter that it is wrong uh, for a minority to actually be at the helm of affairs in the senate we, we, we are yet to see that because we are yet to see that because 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 we are yet to see that because, one, it's simple that when you have been elected, you have been elected as majority party in the House. Mm. It wasn't that you are elected because you are Mr. A or B. You were elected. But you see, one thing is simple, that when we want to talk about the rules, we should also look at how they became officers of the House. They did not meet that, that uh, constitutional provisions when they elected themselves as leaders. But be it as it may, they are there. Now you are crossing over from part A to part B, which at the end of the day, you've now found out that you are now a minority. The honorable thing to do anywhere in the world mm. is for you to resign and keep your integrity at stake. Okay. Uh, we do get that point. But uh, now the APC insists that um, it wants uh, Senate President Saraki to uh, relinquish his seat uh, and is looking for a loyal party member to actually uh, take over from uh, Senate President uh, uh, Bukola Saraki. How far really should loyalty go? Um, should you know, loyalty to the nation be uh, you know, at the expense of loyalty to the party? That's my question. How far really should loyalty go? You see, the issue of replacement is with the senators. I am not a senator. Mm -hmm. So the senators will look within themselves. The APC senators will look within themselves. And when they look within themselves, they should be able to know who will lead them for the remaining period of the, of the section. But the, uh, 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 when you are talking about integrity or what, it is left for the senators who are members of the eighth Senate to elect who will lead them from the APC. Yeah, my simple question is, should loyalty to the nation be at the expense of loyalty to the party? Loyalty to the party also moves you to loyalty to the nation. If you look at what has been happening in the, in the whole thing, uh, if you look at uh, INEC uh, budget, it has been delayed unnecessarily. These were issues we were supposed to have tackled. We were to go on recess by Thursday. We now went on recess by Tuesday. These are issues that we would have handled between Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and when we go on recess. All these issues wouldn't have been there. And INEC would have gone into planning for 2019 election, we are still by this uh, end of uh, August still talking about INEC budget. And not only INEC budget, we are also talking about issue of foreign loan to enable or fund our budget. We are also talking about budget for security agencies that will take care of the security situations come 2019 election. All these things are there. We left it because we shut down the house when we were supposed not to shut down. We, are told, we were all there thinking that the house will, will be shut down on Thursday. The next thing we, we, we saw was shutting down the house on that Tuesday. Yes. So all these things okay. were left and not enough. It had not been attended to. All right, so, Honorable Wehoha. What we are okay. saying the, is simple. Yes. Yes. Uh, Honorable, the, the point there is, when you mentioned the issue of INEC now. Saraki himself has said that there hasn't been foresight on the part of government in the first place when it comes to submitting the budget of INEC because they know, or the government knew, that there will, there's going to be election and preparation for election sometime during the year. And the budget for INEC would have or should have been factored into the budget in the first place so that when the budget was passed a few months ago, the INEC, INEC budget should have been included in it. So, uh, uh, Mike, see, mm. blame game. Mike, yes. blame game does not help this country. 
Reason being that if we continue to blame ourselves, the country will not move forward. We are National Assembly. If the executive makes one mistake or the other, it is for us to move the nation forward by making corrections and, and then putting things in order. We cannot say because the budget was not submitted in time that we will delay the budget. No, it's wrong. As far as I'm concerned, as member of National Assembly, we are there to complement the effort of the executive to make sure that the country moves forward. Mm -hmm. If we don't do like that, at the end of the day, the country will not move forward. Okay, do, but do you see, uh, do you foresee any kind of uh, danger or heating up of the polity? I mean, it, 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 this seems to be a time when the rule of law will truly be put to the test. In, in Nigeria, and it's going to be a balancing act for the APC to find a way of getting uh, Bukola Saraki out as Senate president within the ambits of the rule of law and not the rule of the jungle. No, we're not. You, uh, nobody has said the rule of jungle. What we said it is if it is constitutionally, mm. mind you. If you those that they said that have signed the impeachment document, it is not only APC senators. There are other issues in the House that is also aggravating anger within members. There are issues you people don't know. Like what? So, it, I am not in the Senate, but I believe that there are issues in the Senate that might even make the PDP senators and the Abga senators and then the Labour senators to sign impeachment document, not only because of changing position, but there are other issues which might be problems within the Senate, which will make other senators put down their signature for impeachment. So, if I'm if I'm to be the Senate president, I'll reconvene the House. When you reconvene the House. If, they have, if the senators like you, they will, they will leave you to continue to lead them. If they don't like you, then they will do what they feel is okay for them. Okay, Let, let's get into the specification as to what the Constitution says in impeaching uh, uh, leadership in the Senate. It mm -hmm. talks about uh, a two-thirds majority of members of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. Now, so, some other members of the National Assembly are interpreting it to mean those who are present on that day, the two-thirds majority of those who are present, like maybe a quorum of uh, uh, those who are present on the day that any activity like that uh, takes place. Now, make us understand, because the, the, the Constitution didn't talk about those uh, who are present. It talks about the membership, the membership. of the National Assembly. Uh, can you decipher this for us to understand, just in case, because some senators from the reports we're getting from yesterday and today, they're arguing that they can reconvene and members of those who, are, who form a quorum, two-thirds of, of, that, of that quorum, can go ahead to impeach the, the leadership of the mm. Senate. See, uh, see Mike, mm. here in this particular issue, mm. it is left for the judiciary to interpret the two-thirds. Hmm. Whether it is two-thirds sitting or two-thirds of membership of the Senate. As I know, we have not tested it in the law. We have not tested it. If we test it and then the, the, the Supreme Court interprets that it is two-thirds of the members, then we will not know if it is two-thirds of those sitting. Because if we go by that, you will find a situation where not only only the wrong thing will be done right, but the right thing will be done wrong. Mm -hmm. But what is important in this particular matter is that they are in the Senate. They should carry their cross. If it is to third of those sitting, when they do any impeachment, then it will now move from the National Assembly to the Judiciary for Interpretation. Any way the judiciary interprets it, we will take it as, as the right thing to be done. Okay, I mean, this is uh, getting interesting by the day. Uh, now, APC is daring uh, Bukola Saraki to reconvene uh, the Senate, which almost means that the, the APC is confident that as soon as that, um, you know, uh, as the House reconvenes, 
the impeachment matter is a done, is a done deal. Well, Ngozi, one thing is simple, that at no time will APC do the wrong thing. APC is government of change, and we believe in, the, in doing the constitutional thing and then the way it's supposed to be done as a law-abiding political party. So if the House is reconvened, if the Senate reconvenes, and they have the complete number of those who put down their signature for impeachment, then they will go on with the impeachment. If the Senate president feels that he, after the impeachment that he was wrongly impeached, he will go to court, challenge his impeachment in court. Okay, from, from, from at least from the numbers we have, the, the APC has about 56 members in the Senate, and if two-thirds of the 109 uh, senators are, are to impeach a president or the leadership of the Senate, it would require about 73 uh, senators to do that. The, the APC doesn't seem to have that number as it is right now. We, we've heard comments from some bodies, some interest groups here and there at, at one time or the other saying that, they will do anything to ensure that the Senate president is impeached. Now, keeping that aside, if we have to roll back to 2014, when the uh, 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 Speaker House of Reps at the time, at that time, uh, Aminu Tambowal defected mm -hmm. from the PDP to APC, APC welcomed him, and nobody talked about the issue of uh, he should resign and all of that. They were a beneficiary of that kind of mass defection. So why is APC crying foul now? Mike, yes. when Tambua was the speaker, when Tambua was the speaker, he had good relationship with every member of the house. Mm. Because he had good relationship with every member of the house, the house allowed it. Remember I told you, I made the statement here. I said, there are other issues which might even make PDP senators to put down their signature in the impeachment. We don't know. We are not in the Senate. We can only know this when the Senate reconvenes. So let's watch. Let them reconvene the Senate. And then we will now see whether they have the correct 73 or they have less than 73. If they have less than 73 and they go on with impeachment, then we will now know whether what they are talking about to third is to third of members sitting or to third of members of the Senate. And uh, we're still hoping that you can actually give us an idea of what exactly the other issues are, apart from the way the Senate President, Bukola Saraki, actually merged uh, Senate President. But he has insisted, because there are calls that he actually should reconvene before the uh, uh, time that the Senate is supposed to uh, resume you know, from their recess. And he has said that, that, that the due process will be followed you know, for, for the Senate to actually uh, resume. But it seems that the APC is not, I mean, is not uh, patient enough for that, the, the, the allotted time for that break or holiday by the Senate to actually run its course. It wants the Senate to reconvene like yesterday. Because, you see, one thing you must know is that there are those who take the interests of the nation at heart. There are issues, there are boiling issues that require the attention of National Assembly. And we are going on long vacation. Before, if there are issues, we will, we will immediately reconvene, tackle the issue and continue with our break. But in this case, nothing like that. And there are sensitive issues. So many people are calling that the House or the National Assembly should reconvene and look into issues. But you see, like I keep on saying here, that it borders on integrity and respect for yourself. Hmm. If I do the wrong thing, I should be able to take responsibility for my actions and inactions. When I want to take responsibility for my actions and I don't, and I don't want to take responsibility for my inactions, that's where we have this kind of 
problems. Okay. All right. All right. When it comes to issues mm -hmm. of morality, honor, 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 <laughs> and dignity and integrity, I wonder who determines what, what is, is honorable, honorable in that regard. But we have to leave it here yeah. now, uh, Honorable Chidi Wihelka, representative or House of Rep member representing Ikwere Mohua Federal Constituency. Thank you so much for uh, talking to us on the program.